Stardew Valley is a lovely little indie gem. Created solely by one man, the game perfectly encapsulates the simple joys of tending and growing your own little farm while building and growing relationships with the locals of Stardew Valley. My time at Porsche is exactly like that, except it's a workshop, not a farm. Most of Porsche's DNA owes its existence to games like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing. But can it compare to those two games? Let's find out. Porsche starts off as you'd expect. Taking you by the hand, the game introduces you to all of its basic mechanics at the same time as introducing you to all of the colourful characters. So far, so Animal Crossing. Unfortunately, this is where Porsche starts to let itself down. The residents of Porsche never become as memorable as a Tomanok or a Linus the Homeless Man. It tries to make up for this by having more involved gameplay. All the usual activities are here. Crafting, mining, fist fighting the locals. Wait, that bit's not in Animal Crossing? While the extra gameplay additions aren't very fleshed out, they go a long way to helping Porsche stand out from other games in the genre. Another area Porsche tries to beat his competitors is map size. Again, this is a double-edged sword. The game has plenty of space to run around in, but not a lot to do in that space giving the area surrounding your workshop an empty feeling that can detract a little from the game's themes of community. Speaking of the workshop, harvesting resources and building will take up most of your time in the game. The vast majority of my days were spent chopping down trees or collecting stones for the next project I was tasked with working on. If I wasn't hoarding building materials, I was talking with the townsfolk or fighting my way through a cave. Both of these leave a lot to be desired. The sheer size of Porsche's population makes going around to talk to them all a daunting task. Which, to be honest, wasn't much of a shame, because these guys are seriously f***ing spooky looking. I think it's quite obvious the developers opted for quantity over quality when it came to designing the townsfolk, and the less that's said about the fighting, the better. Everything I've already mentioned, along with some fiddly menus and a hefty amount of audio and technical bugs, make Porsche a difficult game to settle into. This video is at risk of becoming a list of reasons I hate Porsche, which I don't. I really didn't hate my time at Porsche. I just can't play it without comparing it to all the other slice of life games out there. So to even things up a bit, I'll give one thing I think it does better than any of the alternatives. The events. The events in Animal Crossing and Stardew are pretty basic. Mostly just being one of the game's normal activities with a festive theme attached to it. In Porsche though, the events are used to create some excellently unique additions to the gameplay. Yeah sure, you've got your typical fishing competition, that goes without saying. But there's also a day where a hot air balloon flies around the town dropping presents that you and the townsfolk have to fight and scramble around to steal from each other. I really didn't expect that when I took a gentle stroll to the town plaza that morning. I genuinely had a smile on my face the entire time, which is more than I can say for any of Animal Crossing's bug-offs. Stardew has a maze that's the same every year, Porsche has a ghost hunt. Animal Crossing has you gather to listen to a dog play guitar, Porsche has a community-wide snowball fight. If I ever felt tired of the game, I'd check the calendar and see which event was coming up next, and I'd feel compelled to play a few more days just so I could destroy everyone in the martial arts competition. A lot of time was put into making the events unique, and it really does pay off. Porsche lies somewhere between Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing. Using a 3D art style might make the game appear more technically superior than Stardew's 2D sprites, but it doesn't have the same level of polish as an Animal Crossing. A handful of creative events and some fun mini-games like spotting the difference on faulty items do manage to set the game apart from the others, but does that mean you should take the trip? If you're sick of visits to the valley, or spending your holiday time with Tom Nook, I'd say play it. It's a decent budget getaway, but I doubt it'll ever be your favourite holiday destination. What's up guys? Just thought I'd let you know that the mayor commissioned me to build a giant statue in the shape of a thumbs up. It's, uh, it's just down below if you want to have a look at it. Cheers.